These are the ruins of a dying culture, the American shopping mall. This was a working fountain, wasn't it? Yeah. Many, many years yep. ago? It definitely, definitely was. I remember Woolworth being here, and then they brought that skating place in. Uh -huh. Audrey Caligari grew up outside of Toledo. The mall was always the place to go. And like many of her generation, she spent much of her teenage years hanging out at the mall. It was always busy. I mean, you couldn't even get parking spots a lot here. I probably spent most of my paycheck in my high school years at J.C. Penney's and Petrie's. <laughs> Audrey wasn't alone. Everyone wanted to go to the mall. We need it in. We need to shop now. For half a century, the mall was the mecca of our booming consumer society. America's love affair with shopping malls began in 1956, when the nation's first fully enclosed mall, Southdale, opened its doors outside Minneapolis. This was the most exciting period in this economy. Actually, the explosive growth anywhere on earth at any time during history, early 50s through the 70s. Robin Lewis is the author of The New Rules of Retail. In the mid-50s, Dwight Eisenhower signed the Interstate Highway Act. These new highways will have a far-reaching economic impact on the entire nation. And they constructed 54,000 miles of interstate highway. Now what that did immediately is it provided mobility so they began to move into the suburbs and cities. But also what it afforded was uh, the ability to construct these regional malls. And they just exploded um, across, across the country. Between 1956 and 2005, about 1,500 malls were built, including the Mall of America in Minnesota, one of the world's biggest. 4.2 million square feet, 520 stores, an amusement park, and even a wedding chapel. It was a golden age of shopping, which lasted until a new golden age came along. Courtesy of the internet. All of a sudden, the consumer now has every single retail store throughout the world a key tap away. <laughs> Today, malls across the U.S. are dying. No new enclosed mall has been built since 2006. And Lewis predicts fully half of all our malls will close in the next 10 years. For those of you who are not familiar with what a dead mall is, it's basically a shopping mall that has fallen into hard times. So it's either has few shops and fewer shoppers, or it's abandoned and crumbling into ruin. No sale at pennies. My first mall job that I had as a teenager was at a sporting goods store called Herman's World of Sports. Maybe you remember, Herman's World of Sports. Do you, you guys remember that? Yeah. So I, I worked in a ladies shoe store. Uh, I worked in a leather goods store. And I also worked in a um, video store and not being one who was very fond of the retail arts <laughs> I got fired from every single job <laughs> in between these low-paying retail jobs I did what any normal teenager did in the 1990s I shoplifted I'm just kidding. I hung out with my friends at the mall. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh my God, what kind of talk is this? <laughs> Hanging out at the mall could be fun, but it could be really lame too, like sharing a cigarette with a 40-year-old unemployed mall rat who's put on red or black lipstick for the night while you're on your break from your crappy minimum wage job. As I stand here today, Owings Mills has been gutted and it's ready for the wrecking ball. The last time I was there, I was, it was in the evening and it was about three days before they closed the mall for good.
But if the mall is dead, how do you explain this? On the outskirts of Atlanta, we found one formerly dying mall that's thriving. Where some saw financial ruin, Jose Legaspi saw opportunity. The color, the items, that's what brings people from afar into this area. In 2005, he took over a struggling generic mall and transformed it into Plaza Fiesta, designed specifically to meet the needs of an exploding Hispanic population. We follow demographics because it's nothing more than a numbers game, I will tell you. You've got to have enough number of consumers to be able to support something like this or any kind of mall. Legaspi has turned dead space into successful Hispanic malls in several cities with large immigrant communities. Looking to expand, he discovered the Hispanic population around Atlanta had nearly quadrupled between 1990 and 2000. But one thing was missing. Part of the culture of the Hispanic community is one of family. There was not a place where the families could gather. And shopping doesn't just mean shoes and clothing or eating at a restaurant. But it's also a place where they can listen to music, sit down, relax, and spend some time with the family. Plaza Fiesta has 280 stores, but there's also a doctor's office and a dentist. There are hairdressers, money wiring services, everything you might find in a Mexican village. There's even a bus station to bring customers in. The mall had more than four million visitors last year. It's more than one-stop shopping, it's a one-stop experience. It's a one-stop experience. Two, three. The strategy here, paying attention to a changing America and giving customers something they can't get on their computer, sombrero, papa. Sombrero. may also be the key to reinvention at other malls in other places, says Robin Lewis. <laughs> if some of these malls are going to have a, a second life, what are the keys? Experience, entertainment. If we're gonna drag them away from their smartphone and shopping on the internet, you gotta give them a reason to spend the time to go and make the effort to go there. And the only way they're gonna do that is if there's a fun thing going on. And an experience you can't get. You on can't the get online. Exactly.